Welcome to the VAR review, where once again we'll pour over some of the big decisions across Scottish football from the last month or so, listen to the VAR audio and gain a better understanding of why those decisions were reached. As always, I'm delighted to be joined by the Scottish FA's Head of Referees, Willie Collum, who I'm sure will agree it was another busy month. So let's dive straight in. A fantastic game, first and foremost, high drama at Celtic Park for the visit of Aberdeen. Willie Aberdeen thought they had taken the lead when Duke... Uh, scored. Um, let's just take a look at it and see what we think. Just, just, I'll just, yeah, just help me cluster. here. Yeah, yeah just get the cluster. No. Go, go, okay, go. There's a goal. There's a potential okay. handball. Check, check it goal. through. See, first of all, can you go back to the taking of the free kick just to make sure 33 is onside? Okay. There. Is that the kick point? Kick yeah, point so now. he's onside, right. Okay, play it through now. Right, so then he headers it down, it hits 11 somewhere, and then ends up in the net, or does it hit the Celtic player and then end up in the net? Greg, is this one contact? There's an yeah. angle on broadcast that might give you a, a, this an indication. This one here. Yeah, so that hits his arm. So it hits 11's arm. 100% hits him. Checking all potential angles for the potential handball. Just bear with yeah. us. No, so it definitely playing. hits his hand. Right, so can I just see before that it goes in off that handball? Yeah, there'll be a sub after the chat, mate, just let you know. Yeah, it does. Okay. There's no other touches. Right, run it through. It... Clean on broadcast. Right? Yeah, yeah. Is it on, dude? Yeah, yeah. Factual. Yeah. Nick, it's Greg. Yeah. I'm recommending a factual disallowing of the goal. It's scored with a hand by number 11. Number 11 scores so, the goal with so, his hand. So num Reece, number 11... Uh, Red scores the goal with his hand. What do you think about that one, Willie, then, in terms of the decision that was reached, obviously, and then what we heard from your team? I think it's important, Gordon, firstly, to talk about the difficulty of this decision on the field. It's very, very difficult. Um, it's a crowded penalty area. It's almost impossible for the referee, the assistant referee, um, even the fourth official here, to, to have a view or an angle on this. It's very, very difficult. The VAR do well immediately to check the, the build-up to the goal, are we looking at a potential offside, has it struck um, a particular player before it goes in the goal, they identify it does strike the number 11 and then they start to use the angles. I really like the AVAR here, his contribution about the, what are the broadcasts showing, they, they are showing the best angle at that point and he immediately directs the, the VAR to look at that, where they identify that the number 11 of Aberdeen it strikes the hand and then directly into goal. They start to check as well about the Celtic player, the possibility the Celtic player touches a ball before it goes over the line. It's very, very difficult to tell if that's the case or not. Um, but for, for us, that makes no difference because this is the Celtic player trying to save a goal-bound effort here. He's not deliberately playing the, the, the ball. Um, it would be the same if the goalkeeper got a hand to it and it still continued into the net. The goal would still be, be disallowed here for the handball um, directly into the goal. So it's fairly cut and dry for you, right decision, no even, no, no doubt about it really and, and reached in the, the correct manner? Correct decision for us, absolutely. No need for a card, also no need for the referee to come to the monitor. This is a factual review, so overturned by the VAR. There we go, nice and easy to start off with then. Let's see if it continues on that theme uh, as we go through the rest of the clips. A few from, uh, or a couple I should say, from a game at Fir Park, Celtic the visitors there, and this is an interesting one. Willie, because you've got two for the price of one, two sort of different incidents rolled into one. Let's take a look. So let's go through this again. Okay. Just confirm one field decision, Digger. Just delay, we'll go through it. Just check the VPP. Okay, let's go. So let's just watch what could potentially have happened here. Hand. Ball's goal. played in. Give him the goal. Okay, okay, they'll check it. Ball's played. Enough guys will no, check there's, it. There's no offside. There's no offside. Yep. Play through. Guys will check it, okay. It's not can a penalty. Can see what it's hit? Normal contact between them. Can, can we see behind the goal? Is there a behind no, the goal, goal camera? Yep. Aye. Can't talk to you. Aye. 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 Came off his no, hand. Bit through here. Guys, guys, Aye, guys, guys! The question becomes, is that a handball? Is that a penalty? Are you happy with the fouls? Yeah, but there's no play again. Game, please. Okay. Just continue to delay. We're just going through the whole thing, Gary. Right, let's so, go and see if there's okay, a potential man. penalty kick because the ball's played through before. Okay. There's a hand in his back. 
Would you say that's enough to go on to shoot a penalty kick there, the push? Nah. No? I think it's just a coming together. Oh. And it's just it's a handball there. It's just a coming there. together and then a tangle of legs. I think it's probably more that as you describe, Gary. I think there's a kind of thing. Yep. And then as they come together, it's a yep. factual decision for a handball. Dig it, it's Alan. I'm going to give you a factual yep. decision. I want you to disallow the goal as the ball's been played okay. in by the hand of the Celtic player. Yep. Okay. Well, hopefully the first part's clear, and correct me if I'm wrong. So we've seen Duke, this ball goes in off Maeda's arm, so no issue there. That, that goal can't stand, yeah. that's fine. I think everyone makes their peace with that. The big debate is, should that have been a penalty? What's your take on it? So for us, you're right, the, the first part is straightforward, um, disallow the goal, um, but then immediately the VAR and the AVAR must go into a check about the, the, the possible penalty. They've listened as well to the referees' on-field communication. The on-field officials have given a goal, they've not identified the handball, and the match referee has also communicated that he thinks it's normal contact between the defender and the attacker. Um, in our opinion, this is not normal contact. Um, we think the Celtic attacker is more ahead of the, the motherwell defender. We think there is an arm movement by the motherwell defender. And also then um, that causes a collision in the ground as well by, by the legs, as well as the arm and the legs. We think there should be a penalty kick. We want the referee to be brought to on-field review to review this incident. And ultimately for us, a penalty kick should have been awarded. Into that area of subjectivity though, how, how do you establish a consistency on what is a of too much contact because you mentioned it before and we've spoken previously about you know normal football contact mother will defender might feel he's he's just sort of running and the celtic player it's a is a natural coming together how do you make that distinction between what's what's too much i think if you were the mother will defender you could make a case for the the tangle of legs but i think there's an initial arm movement as well that comes across the celtic player which causes that tangle at, at ground level um, so for us there's enough in this um, for it to be a penalty kick without doubt and i repeat again i think the celtic attacker is ahead of the motherwell defender here and i think that also causes a problem this is not just two players running side by side into the penalty area to, to follow through or chase a ball this for us um, is clear that the celtic um, attacker is ahead we want the referee brought to on field review to award a, a penalty kick here what i would say as well is that we need the referees to be absolutely clear what they mean by normal contact is it about the the legs the tangle of legs because then it helps the var be able to identify that that perhaps the referee's not been able to see the, the potential arm movement. OK, so should have been a penalty on that one. We weren't done there at Fir Park, though. Liam Gordon of Motherwell was sent off late on in that one. So let's take a look and get Willie's verdict on that. No contact. Play, play, play on, play on. OK, 38 is the challenge. Play on. Good. That's caution, caution for me, Gordon, Liam Gordon. So his foot's low. Caution, no. number four. Unacceptable. Number so four. Is there a second to caution be happy with the second one? No caution requires that caution priority. Just continue to delay, just continue to delay. Actually catch him higher up on the ankle rather than the foot. Would you agree with that? There? Yeah, that's I think the other angle. angle. <coughs> there? Mm, I think that's probably more of a serious foul play challenge than there. There, there's, 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 there. Super slow-mo for behind Just the continue to delay, we'll just check this for serious foul play. What's yeah, yeah, fine, injury? okay. okay. Like yes, there, he's caught him. It's above okay. the boot, above the ankle. the ankle. Yeah. You agree that's serious foul play challenge? Hold it there, hold it, Paul. I would think well. so. So we're going to show him this angle here. Okay. Digger, it's Alan. I'm going to recommend yeah. an on-field review for a potential red okay. card for serious foul play. He's at screen. Yeah, okay, so just as he plants it, yes. As I so ankle buck under it, okay. So what I'm saying is he's caught him there. Yeah. Is he's sexually drugged. He's lunged in a bit and he's caught him above the sort of boot on the ankle, as you can see there, mate. Do you want to show him? Do, yeah, do, do you want another angle on it? Get Do you want another angle, angle on it? I'm pretty certain. Yeah. No, I'm pretty certain on it. Okay, run it through. To be certain. Yeah, clear, clear, clear angle. angle. He's left the screen. Oh my God, that's a, that's a red car challenge there. You can see it quite clearly there. He's yeah. caught him and he's lunged in at speed. Yeah. It's an interesting one, Willie, because you can hear at the time everyone thinks it's a yellow. I happened to be in the stadium. It felt like everyone thought it was a yellow. Is this where VAR's really important? Because once you see the height of that contact, it becomes a lot, a lot clearer. It illustrates the importance of VAR. Firstly, we want the tackle identified on field. I keep saying that we, we don't want to have to go to VAR. There are times where we, we need to use it, like this instance here, but we would rather our match officials identified this on field. 
I think you're right. I think something that contributes here is the, the Celtic player immediately jumps up. I don't mean that that negates anything about the tackle, um, but I think that probably throws everybody to thinking this is a routine yellow card that it never jumped out um, watching it either. But when you start to analyse the footage, the VAR and the AVAR go into a, an in-depth analysis of that footage, it's quite clear this is a serious foul play challenge. The area, the contacts made on, the lunging motion, um, this tackle quite clearly in dangers the safety of an opponent and should be issued with a, a red card on field and if missed on field then without question it's an on field review to recommend a red card for serious foul play. Okay whilst we're on the subject then of potential serious foul play let's take a look at this incident involving Hibbs Joe Newell. Joe Newell. Off orange last off orange Show me that. Hey, that's a free kick for me, kids, but yeah, it's a caution, it's a second caution. Second oh, caution. You, you, you Joe Newell, 100%. Oh, second caution. He's in here, in between me and I. Okay. Okay, you were checking that, guys. Just bear with us okay. just now. Okay. Okay, so right. I can see Joe. contact Joe. on the, the shin. It's Joe. However, Joe. I don't Joe. think there's a, 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 a lot of force in this here, Alan. There's a lot of force in this, there is an element of studs in the shin, but I don't think there's enough speed for us for a serious foul play. So there is contact on the studs, but I agree, there's no force, it catches him though. Yeah, I'm happy that it's a reckless challenge rather than a serious foul play. Ignore it. Chris, confirming on-field decision of reckless, Joe Newell, the ref has given the decision. In the end, Joe Newell does get sent off because it's a second caution. I think the big question maybe, Willie, is should it have been a straight red card? Does that tick the serious foul play boxes for you? This ticks the boxes for serious foul play. This um, clearly endangers the safety of an opponent. The tackle is far too high, um, leading with the studs. Um, you can see also a bend in the Dundee United player's leg. It's important for us, again, I go back to identifying this in field, when these kind of tackles happen, it's normally when a poor touch has been taken or the ball's out with the playing distance and the player's making up ground here to try and retrieve the ball. And there is the situation here where the player is given a second yellow card um, for a reckless challenge, so the player is going off. That doesn't matter to us. We want to analyse that situation in isolation. Um, the protocol here should be that the fourth official or the, the stand-side assistant referee here should keep the player on the field. Don't let him leave the field. We want an on-field review instigated. The referee would come to the monitor. He would upgrade the yellow to red and, and, and show that to the, to the player involved. So for us here, without a doubt, regardless of whether the player's going off or not, this tackle on its own should have resulted in a red card for serious foul play. How can you try to ensure then that that, that level of decision-making is there to your satisfaction or the consistency is there? Because we've heard the audio. If someone says, I don't think there's enough force, how do you convince them that there, there's enough force? You know, that, that still is obviously going to be quite a subjective thing to say, isn't it? Yeah, but when, when you see this in terms of the, the, the height, the position of the studs, the bend in the leg, sometimes force is not the only criteria. I would ask people to look at it in isolation with the main criteria and saying, does that endanger the safety of an opponent? And it does. What's really, really important about this clip, also important for the last clip um, involving um, the tackle at Motherwell Celtic, is the VAR review it at full speed and slowed down. We've moved away from, from the issues we had in previous seasons where we were judging this purely on a still image. Sometimes a still image is really, really important because it, it clearly identifies a point of contact and point of contact is really, really crucial. But the good thing for me in the last two clips is that the VAR have analysed the situation using normal speed and then use it slowed down. But here, ultimately, the VAR and the AVAR come to the wrong conclusion, the same as a referee on the field. OK, let's take a look at this incident involving the match at Ibrox between Rangers and St Mirren. High boot can often be a... A difficult one. There was a high-profile incident at Tynecastle last season that people keep citing. That was before your time, Willie, um, in this role. But let's take a look at, at Conor Barron and Tayosi Olusanya here and see what we think. APP, please. OK, reset that. OK, show me that. Oh, Olusanya's back up. Delay, 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 delay. Delay, checking potential red card. 
No, he's actually played the ball. Show me that. Yes, there is no contact. Yep, yep. Callum, check complete. Check complete exactly as described. Exactly as described. What's your verdict on that one, Willie? Like I say, we've seen incidents before and they cause a lot of debate, these ones. So what's your take on that one? We discussed this clip at great length um, in, in the refereeing group. Um, what we're clear on, Gordon, 100%, this is not serious foul play. This is not a red card for serious foul play. It doesn't meet the criteria. There, um, the, the, what I like about this is the referee is clearing his communication on field. You know, that, that, that for him there's no contact or potentially very minimal contact um, and certainly no way any studs. Um, the VAR check different angles and they can confirm that view. Um, for us, it's, it's hard to identify if there's a slight bit of contact, particularly from one angle, but if there is a slight bit of contact, it's with the top of the boot very, very slight. Um, this does not mean that meet the criteria. It's not excessive force. It's not brutality. Um, and for us, the tackle does not endanger the safety of an opponent. We're not a sink here with other countries either. I often use the clips to consult my colleagues abroad and heads of refereeing in other countries, and nobody thinks this, this is a red card. It's not a red card for serious foul play in any shape or form, and it's a very good decision um, by the on-field referee and the VAR. There is a case for a yellow card. The referee never gave any card. But there is a case that you could say the height, um, going in for the ball at this height with a foot raised like that, could be deemed reckless. Because I want to, to emphasise something else. You don't need to make contact for something to meet criteria. But in this case, even if there was contact, it's not with the studs here. So this is not a red card for us. OK, not a high boot as such, but on the topic of contact, no contact, too much contact, let's take a look at this one. There was a lot of debate around this challenge by Rio Hatati down at Rugby Park quite recently. So let's take a look, have a listen and see what Willie thinks. Yep, we're OK with that. Can, can say anyway. No contact, continue, tackle. <laughs> Stretching. Okay, I, I think see the well, contact guys. here. Yeah, I think caution as well, next one. OK, so contact. just run it nice and slow. Just delay just now, Nick, just delay just now. Okay, Sorry, the contact is high, but low force. So I've got him lunging. I know he's pulling the leg back, but... It studs here. studs and it's quite high, but it's not full on. I don't not think. full on force yet. I've got just yeah. another angle. Nick, continue to delay just yeah. now, mate. Continue yeah. to delay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, this one nice and slow. So, for me here, contact. There's a bend by the leg, but for me, a stud there is onto the shin. What do you think? Studs onto the shin. Yeah. For me, it's, it's, wait, there's not, it's a not lot enough of intensity. And he's yeah. pulling the leg back, yep. Studs. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm going to agree with that. Look bad, yep, but, but at full speed, full speed glancing not... contact. Okay, Nick, check complete. Okay, an interesting one, this. First and foremost, should that have been a red, or are you happy with yellow? So for us, Gordon, this is a red card for serious foul play. Um, again, we would like the decision to be identified on field. Um, and a, a red card issued here, a, a yellow card was issued. But we also understand it's difficult at full speed. Decisions are difficult, as you can see earlier, for example, in the Motherwell Celtic Club as well for the tackle. But when this is then reviewed by the VAR, again, they're very good at looking at various angles. Um, they use criteria. They talk about criteria, they talk about force, they talk about drawing the leg back. They do mention that the leg is high um, and the studs are, are, are on the leg, but that's two criteria for us that are quite clear here. The leg is, is very high, the player arrives late, and the studs are, are full on the leg. A glancing blow for me is more where there's a touch in the leg and the boot goes past. Um, for me, the studs are, are completely on the leg here. But the criteria, the VAR and the VAR, fail to mention is does this tackle endanger the safety of an opponent? And for us, on review, this does endanger the safety of an opponent. And we've coached the referees, again, red card on field, if missed, on field review for a possible serious foul play. In fairness, the communication is quite clear. Does it definitely reach that bar of intervention where it becomes the, the error that, that, you know, that you want overturned? Because we sometimes see a lot of tackles and we've seen them where there's that real force, that real momentum where it's, you know, it's going through a player. You, you kind of worry for the, the, the leg, as you said. I don't think there's any denying the contact here. But the, the issue they're clearly having, if you listen to the communication, is, the, is force. I'm going to guess that's based on the fact that Hitati is sort of landed by the time the, the leg is up. H how, do you, how do you make sure you can, you can contradict that bit about there not being enough force? I think... 
I said earlier in the, the, the show that we don't want still images. We don't want to use a still image um, with, with a point of contact. But you also need to take account where is the point of contact. Um, by the time the contact's made on the leg here, the ball's on the ground. Um, it's also very, very late. And you can't judge every serious foul play tackle by force used. You also need to be careful you don't judge every serious foul play tackle by the consequence on a player, i.e. the leg bending. Yeah. That doesn't need to happen. The reason that, that we want a red card here is we think it endangers the safety of an opponent and also we want to be consistent. This is a message we're sending out to referees that for us, this is a red card and we want that consistently applied. So if tackles like this happen going forward, we expect a red card on field. We, we want the referee to identify that, but if no, we want on field review. OK, so that one should have been a red card. Just quickly, Willie, we'd be here all day if we went through every clip, every VAR audio, but that was quite an incident-packed game. Joe Wright, um, there was a, an alleged elbow on Adam Eder early in the game, yellow card. Happy with that? Yeah, we've analysed that clip uh, as a group. Um, we, we thoroughly looked at it and the command that player clearly has his eyes on the ball. Um, some people have even argued, should it be a yellow card? Um, because there's no intent there. But we need to emphasise that, that when you're, you're jumping like that in your arm and you make reckless contact, regardless of intent or not, it should be a yellow card. So we are very comfortable with a yellow card there. It doesn't meet any of the criteria for us for a red card. Perhaps a more complex one, is Liam Donnelly chasing down Casper Schmeichel. Casper Schmeichel was not happy um, at what took place thereafter. What, what's your view on that? Or tell us why, why that played out the way it did. So in that incident, Gordon, if you, if you went back um, to when I was a young referee, the laws of the game clearly said if you strike or attempt to strike an opponent, it would be a, a, a red card. Um, that's not the case in the law any longer. Um, and the commander's players' actions don't meet the threshold for excessive force or brutality. He's a good bit away from the goalkeeper in terms of his movement. So it's a correct um, yellow card um, for a reckless challenge for us. OK, this is an interesting one, because forget excessive force, sustained pulling, players being active or impacting things. This is about the technology and how sometimes it maybe doesn't always quite work out the way we hope. So let's take a look at Dundee against St Johnston up at Dens. APP. Yep. Possible offside. Possible offside. Possible attacker, handball. handball. OK, confirm his on-field decision. We'll check through. Kevin, on-field decision, goal, yeah. OK, okay yeah. let's go. Yes, please. Goal. So that's head, there's a possible the defender handball, the and then a I'm possible offside. Show me this on tight, please. Just show me that Go. passage. Tight, tight. I'm having a look at the broadcast. Okay, so we've got attacker, okay, defensive well, handball, 29 plays it, possible offside on yeah, 10. Okay. Right, I want you to take me to the kick point by red 29. Forward, that's the kick point. Now, now I want you to show me right 18. Tell them I've understood. Yep, yeah, noted, Kevin. Continue to check for a possible offside. So have you f frozen that in, the kick point? Because I'm now going to need yep, to see if I play yeah. through because I want to see if 10 scores before it's over the line. So play through and then take me back to kick point if he does okay, play. It. I'm going to play it through. So the goal is scored by 10, by agreed. 10. Yep. So we're going to need a line on 10. So go back to kick point. Yep. And now can you give me a different angle so I can see the furthest point forward of number 10? Okay, I'm going to through a couple So here. it's probably going to be his right knee from that angle, okay? Or I can also show you this one Continue here. to yeah. check the possible offside. Right knee or right foot. We're having a look. Okay, so defensive line, Daniel. The goalkeeper oh, is here. You. Number eight, right foot is going to be defensive line, agree? What they're looking at. Yep. So okay, so put a defensive the line on blue eight, please. Because the lines and all the bodies in the area. So they need to, they need to check it. Right foot I've also, I've also of blue eight. That That's where I want my defensive line. The build -up. Okay, so they, they're, checking the whole, they're checking the whole picture. Okay. Right. Are you yeah, happy yeah, with here? Left, left one, please. Sure. Yep. Can uh, put that in as a defensive I've line. I've already communicated all. Just on the foot. Yes. Happy with here? Yeah. Now I've got no image here of the attacker, so can you show me that angle Are you again? Happy to prove that line. Continuing to delay. Yes, Kevin. Yes, but I need now to see the attacking yeah. position. So show me a different angle oh, so no. I can see where the attacker yeah, is. Yeah. So I've got no clear evidence of an attacking offside here, Daniel. Would you agree? Based on that angle, I can't be sure. Um, based on that angle, I can't be sure. Can't draw the line on him. Not from the behind camera, we can't know. So we've got no clear image. Play through, please. Play through. 
So I've got no clear image to put an attacking line on, Daniel. Okay, okay. so I'm yep. planning to bring him across to show him it because we don't have any clear evidence because I can't put an attacking you line down and that's the protocol. Line. Correct, do you agree? Mm -hmm. Okay, Kevin, start making your way to the screen. I'm going to bring you across and show you. So, I'm Kevin, sorry, listen, you're going to see yeah, a possible handball nice. by defensive 15. Then the attacker plays it here and 10 scores the goal. There's no clear evidence that 10 is handball. offside. Okay, Let play through. Okay, here it comes. And then pause it at the point of impact, because that just looked like his leg. Slow this down, <clears throat> pause there. Yeah. So let me rewind, rewind, rewind. Okay, so there's a possible handball, right? And then the attacker plays it. Yes. The attacker okay, plays it that. now, plays and then it. 10 scores. Okay, so you've got no uh, lines for that? There's no clear evidence. We'll show you what the right camera shows at the yeah, possible so offside. Okay. So for me then, again. what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to be awarding sure. the goal, because... Uh, if there's a possible handball in the APP, and you cannot tell me that that's offside, Graham's decision is on field. Decision yep. is a goal, so I'm going to give Bring. a goal. I'm going to explain that to both uh, both the managers. Okay. This is quite a rare one. Well, we don't see many of these, so VAR unable to determine really if there's an offside or not because of the congested penalty box, camera positions, that sort of thing. Talk us through that. We don't see too many of them. Everything happens in this incident, you know, it's at the very end of the game, it's a crucial incident in the game because it's ultimately the winning goal. Um, it's a very difficult decision for the on-field officials in terms of judging there's a potential handball in there. The assistant referee is very confident in giving the goal um, onside, but then the VAR, as in any goal, immediately have to go into a check. They, they rightly identify the, the, the possible handball, so if... if they deemed this to be offside, and I'll come to that in a second, there would have been a punishable handball for a, for a penalty kick here, which is before the offside. But when when the VAR starts to draw the lines in, in the furthest forward plane part of the body of the attacker, it's not possible because of the camera position. The camera's looking through other bodies. Um, it's no fault of VAR. It's just... Um, the way the scenario is developed, and it happens elsewhere, not just in Scotland. Um, we're fortunate it doesn't happen often. What I'm really pleased, Gordon, here about the VAR, the VAR doesn't try and guess where to draw the lines. He immediately realises after a good few attempts, it's not possible, and he's right to stop there. It's going to be supporting the on-field decision. They look behind the goal as well to try and find an angle, who's the furthest forward, what's the body part. But again, the lines behind the goal are not calibrated for offside. Um, so that brings them no success either. They cannot draw the lines. Then comes a big question um, about what do you then do? Of course, you support the on-field decision, but this is a crucial point in the game. It's probably the winning goal, and the, the VAR decides to say to the referee, I'm going to let you have a look. Now, a lot of people would probably say, why? Why are you asking the referee to have a look? What's he going to change? But it keeps everything transparent then everybody can see the referee himself is going to have a look. He's not come to any other conclusion. He agrees with what the VAR is saying, and then they award the goal. The, the, the referee plays a key role here because he immediately tells the two coaches as well so that everybody's aware on field. But the balance here that we need to get right, the check takes a long, long time. We're then adding to that check by going to the monitor as a referee um, to look again at the incident, which adds on more time. The players are cooling down, people are getting agitated in the stadium. It's finding that fine balance. But when the referee sent, when when the referee was sent to the monitor, I had doubts about that process. But I also think people acknowledge then that everything was clear. And it's Everybody would be able that to final see it. Decision, yep. as we often yep. hear. No, it doesn't need to there because. Nothing, Supposed he's not going to say anything different. Yeah. But at the same time, I think it solved a lot of problems by the fact that he went to see it himself and then was able to communicate with the coaches and the players that he had actually looked at the same incident um, as the VAR was looking at. The response to this, though, and you might understand it, is, so, well, what's the point? What's the point in VAR? If you can't, if you can't get these right, I think the Dundee manager might have said similar, uh, similar words. You know, what's the point? Do we not have enough cameras? This is typical, you know, what, why is this happening? How do, you, how do you feel about those questions, those accusations? What I would say is that, that these kind of incidents probably happen once or twice a season. 
you know, the majority of the time, um, the overwhelming majority of the time, we're able to draw lines. Um, but this is not a fault, a, a technical fault. It's just the position the players end up in and the position the camera's in. My colleagues in England, this, this happened last season in England as well. So these scenarios will happen from time to time, but um, there's very few of them. And the majority of the time, um, VAR is obviously excellent at helping support whether a decision is onside or offside. Um, and, and I think what, what we, we need to realise here is that the on-field officials, you support the decision because they're confident, the assistant referee is confident, this is onside, we have nothing to prove otherwise, and the goal's given. Now, one of the hot topics then in recent weeks has been holding in the box, a real minefield in some ways. But let's take a look, Easter Road, late in the game as well, so late drama, this incident involving Hibs and Dundee United. Let's take a look first, listen through, see what the process sounded like and get Willie's take on it. Great, I need to see why he's in the deck there. Yeah, I'll be right Take to live. On there. Yep. Can I see what's happening here? If you get a chance to lay it. See yep. there where he falls down there? Oh no, he's just thrown himself down. And okay, I'm just looking through all the others. Through all the others. Just, just to lay it, just to lay it. Come on, okay. can you delay the game? Show, show, delay me, the game. For this. show me for this angle, yeah, please. Delay, delay. Colin, I'm checking a potential penalty for a shirt pull. Checking potential penalty. Okay. So, I like to see when the ball comes into play. So, the ball is in play. He's in the area, yeah. Okay, there's a continued shirt pull, and I can see a, a clear shirt pull. There's an image there. I just Tom, need to see the kick the point APP, okay. for any potential offsides. Okay, show me kick point, please. Yep. Yeah, so okay, so there's no offsides. I can right. clearly see that he's onside. So I'm going to recommend an on-field review here. Colin, it's Greg. I'm going to recommend an on-field review for a pen potential penalty kick. Okay, we're going to show you it through. You want to just focus on the 99 at the penalty spot? Yes. You'll see the shot pull. We'll show you it at, at half speed now. So you'll see 99, clear pull yeah, of the shot, clear image. Forward, and he goes down. So nine, and the... The ball is definitely already, in play. 99's already cautioned, already cautioned yep. second 99, caution for correct. 99. Yes. It will be, okay. uh, and you're rest restarting with a penalty kick, yeah. Okay, thank you. Well, there's a lot going on here. I feel we could do a full show on pulling in the box. Would you give us your take on it first, and then we'll see what kind of debate you and I can come up with. Before we start anything, I think it's important to acknowledge the check takes far too long. It's far too excessive. Um, the, the VAR and the VAR check in this incident, it takes too long. We want to reduce our timings when, when we're looking at incidents. And, and this is a case where we said we would try and make improvements in this area by being quicker in terms of a check. I want to go through the clip um, bit by bit. So can we say that the, the, the Hibs player pulls the Dundee United player? Of course he does. Um, I don't think anybody watching this clip would argue with that. But we also need to listen to our stakeholders. We need to listen to what people are saying. We have the KMI panel. And the overwhelming response about this incident has been, this is not for VAR. If it's given on field, of course it's supported if the referee gives it. But our take on this moving forward is that it's off the ball. We don't think it impacts. Um, some people will debate, could it have impacted because the ball's knocked back across? Could that player have got there? It's very difficult. It's a very difficult decision then for the VAR and, and the referee to make. There could be instances where we would need to look at that, where the secondary decision would be very, very key. But listening to a lot of people um, about this incident, it would probably, moving forward, be in our best interest to leave this incident alone um, and for VAR not to get involved. It's so difficult because nobody can deny that the holding takes place. Um, but the impact is a key question for us here. There's nothing in the laws of the game about impact, but we also need to look at, well, where do we draw the line? You know, if somebody pulls somebody 20 metres off a ball, do you look at that? Or if somebody scores a goal and somewhere there's been a minimal bit of contact, is that right to punish it? So these are all things we need to consider. Somebody asked me a question recently, Gordon, though, about the players helping us here, and, and somebody else said, well, why should the players help you? There's nothing in the laws there about players helping you with this type of incident. But I'm asking the players to help us. I'm asking the players, the clubs, to help us, because if you pull like this, you run the risk of being punished. And often the criticism comes back on the referees. 
But I want to emphasise, it's not the referees who are doing the pulling. So it's important the players try to help us here We knowing that they run the risk because these are very, very difficult decisions, particularly when you're in a match with VAR and people can see these images. Yeah, I think you're right. So you, you support the view of your KMI panel said that they don't think that should have been a penalty. You're agreeing with that. Is this... So whilst it's not a hard and fast rule, is that the mindset that we should be getting into about the impact? So where, where the ball's going, roughly? You know, again, I appreciate that you can't always nail it down in that regard, but is that is that the sort of criteria you would look for? That's the kind of criteria we're looking at there. And you're right to say, though, it's very difficult to nail it down because, as I say, there could be secondary movements at times. So I don't want to say, regardless of what happens here, we will never give a penalty. We need to take every incident in isolation. But if you look at this incident on its own, following feedback, looking at it as a group of referees, listening to our stakeholders, also for me, I don't think this is what VAR was brought in for, to identify absolutely everything here. Um, and for us, moving forward, in this exact incident, we don't want an on-field review. What kind of feedback do you get when you're trying to get that buy-in from players to, to help you out, was your phrase? Because I suppose once that decision is given, and yes, Hibs can feel hard done by because of the lack of impact, but if you're a player, you've made the decision to pull, is, is it really okay for you to then turn around and say, oh, I only did it because I knew that, the, I knew that, that player wasn't impacting the ball? I, I can't imagine that really should form part of part of the argument, maybe retrospectively, but in terms of in the, the heat of the moment for that incident? It's a good point, Gordon, because when I speak to the players and the coaches and, and the media, I have said to them, when the holding starts in a lot of incidents, that player doesn't know where the ball's going. So he's taking a big risk, yeah. you know. If, if he thinks the ball's coming nowhere near him or his opponent, why is he holding? And that's also a difficulty for us as well. But we're not always governed by the KMI panel. We're not governed by what other people's views are. We're governed by the laws, so we need to consider that. But we also need to listen to people's views. I said when I came into this role, I would also learn for the players, former players, coaches, because we need to listen to what people are telling us, why things are happening. And it's been overwhelming for us that people don't want us to get involved in this kind of scenario. And I think that's supported by how long the check took. But also, in fairness to the VAR and the AVAR here as well, 24 hours earlier, we had two separate holding incidents in other matches. And subconsciously, there's a weekend where there's, there's been holding highlighted, and that could play a part as well. I don't worry about 24 hours earlier, because just a bit later in this one, just yep. briefly on that, because that, that does make it worse if, if you're Hibs, so to speak, because they feel then they should get one, and they're saying if one's given, why is the other one not? Where's the consistency? What's your view on the second one and how they compare or contrast? I don't think there's enough in the second claim for me. I, I don't think we would even discuss it if the first one hadn't been given. But I understand the issue for people there because there is an element um, of holding involved there. You can see the player's shirt coming up, whether that's just because of a hand movement or it is a part of holding. But I don't think we'd discuss it. I, I know that when it was reviewed at the KMI panel, for example, it was unanimous that that was not a penalty. But overwhelming again was the, the majority of the panel felt the first one shouldn't have been given either. And that's the problem, isn't it? Because this is hard for fans to stomach because they're saying if one's given, why is the other not? But you're saying the first one's a mistake, so you don't want to see two mistakes, ultimately. No, no. We don't, we, in refereeing, there's a big, big danger where, you know, people think, well, let's just give something to balance things up. That's crazy, you know, because you're then making two errors. Mm. That's not what we want. The other reason why I would hope players won't take the risk, Gordon, is because we see a player issued with a second yellow card here. Because it's blatant holding, sanction. it's blatant holding, and that should be sanctioned with a yellow card. So as soon as the referee goes to the monitor there, he looks at that incident, he's going to give a penalty. Regardless of what we now think about that incident, he's correct to give a, a yellow card. So that's another reason why I would say to players they need to be very, very careful. Because we were very consistent that weekend in terms of the three holding offences that were punished, all of them resulted in a yellow card. It's unfortunate for this player here, it's his second yellow card. You alluded to it, Willie. Sometimes themes come up, especially in the same weekend, and, and holding, pulling was one. Let's look at St Mirren, Ross County, same weekend, and see how we think this fits, how this criteria works on this one. I don't know what happened there. I'm going to have to have a look at this. There's a, there's a hole there. Let him shake it. Let him shake it. There's a fairly sustained hold. There's, yeah. I've seen clear evidence there that there is a... 
I think there's an impact. You you go back to live, Dougie. Can, right, can I just see a wider angle of this to yeah, of course. Don't delay, the restart, delay, delay the restart. Delay, delay the restart. Delay, delay. Checking possible penalty, mate. Yeah, okay. As the ball comes in. <sighs> okay, can I see the tight again? There's a clear Dougie, Dougie. Dougie, I'm seeing clear evidence of a hold without any He's not making any attempt to go and mark him properly. He pulls him. I think there's a prolonged pull. I think it's too much. And I think the ball's in play. Can I just check the ball's in play, please? Okay. Right, okay. The ball's in play and I'm going to ask for a check here from Don. I'm going to ask him to come across. Don, I'm going to recommend an on-field review for a potential penalty kick here. So if you could make the signal and come across and I'll run it through for you. Okay, Don, first thing to say is I've checked for the kick of the ball and the ball is in play uh, as the offence okay, continues. Perfect. Okay, so I'm, what I'm going to show you here, tell me when you're at the screen, can you see the images? I can see the image. So, just run it so as you can see number there, yeah, number 19 is pulling okay. Fraser. Yeah. And there's a sustained the hold for me, clear oh, evidence, yeah. Don, of a pull. Yeah, yeah. Yes, confirm. Okay. It's always good to hear it, Willie. That, that's why we do this. So prolonged pull, sustained pull. What does that? What does that mean? What what makes a pull prolonged or sustained? Because thinking back to the Hibs one as well, Hibs fans might find this useful. How do you? I mean, I'm assuming there's not a set number of seconds or anything like that. I think the actual holding in both clips, comparing this with the Hibs Dundee United clip, is, is pretty similar. I think there is a, a sustained, prolonged hold. There's a clear image. You can clearly see in the footage that the, the shirt is right out. Um, I think what makes this clip different is because it's much closer to the drop zone. I, I think this is definitely an inactive area for us. Again, the, the VAR immediately check at the beginning, is the ball in play? That's crucial because if you hold somebody like this but the ball's not in play, it's impossible to award the penalty kick. They need to check that. We, we, we like that they make sure they check it because it's in the attacking phase of play. They're going back and, and checking that. So that's really, really important for us. But again, I go back to, to the question I posed or the point I made in the last clip. When the holding starts here, it's at the millisecond the ball leaves the corner arc. So this defender here doesn't know where the ball's going. So in my opinion, his actions are to impede the opponent because he thinks there's a chance the opponent might get to it. Some people might argue that this is definitely going over the head tier, that it's no impacting, but it's in too close proximity, proximity for me here. And I think this is, is correctly punished. It is sustained, it is prolonged, clear image. It's very difficult, again, that's why I'm asking the players not to run the risk. It's very difficult when you present this image to a VAR that they ignore it. I think these are the ones that people really need to look out for because you've spoken before. It is, you know, it's a contact sport. You accept that there will be pulling and holding in the box, and I'm not saying it makes it okay. But as an example, if you and I are right next to each other and we're both kind of holding, that is then very different from a player who's getting away from another player. There's an outstretched hand and the shirt's then pulled back. That's the image, isn't it? That that sort of sends during, alarm bells ringing. During a pre-season meeting, Gordon, again going back to learning for the Cubs, a manager said to me that defenders commit these actions because they panic. Because exactly as you say, they are worried the attacker is getting away from them. And I think that that highlights these situations, you know, that's something we are learning for the Cubs, for the players, for the coaches. So it's important for us to take that on board and have tactical awareness in scenarios when that can happen as well. But there's such a fine line between impact and no impact. So to give a direct guidance in that is very, very difficult. I hope these clips illustrate that. For us here, we think this should be given. This is punishable. Um, Hibs Dundee United, we think, is, is further out and um, less opportunity to be given. But again, I want to emphasise um, the players have a responsibility here for us. Well, thank you to Willie once again. That brings us to the end of the latest VAR review. I'm sure you found it insightful. Always good to hear the audio, hear how these decisions were made. And we appreciate Willie's openness, holding his hands up on things that he thinks could have been done better. So that's all for now. We'll see you next time on the next VAR review.